The Sign of Jonas. My name is Daniel Vallis from InformedChristians.com, a website ministry devoted to discerning current events from a Christian perspective. This is a warning, but it is not a prediction. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25 reminds us what we should be doing in these last days. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. We have heard the calls for peace and safety. We know that sudden destruction is coming to the world. And we know that Scripture calls Christ's servants to prepare their hearts and to be ready for when He comes and when He is revealed. So as we see the storm of sudden destruction looming on the horizon, and even right now we see many signs in the financial realm that things are quickly falling apart, the stage is set. The enemy is ready. And so now as we see the day approaching, we must provoke each other to love Christ more and to work for things that will count for eternity. And I hope that is what your focus is on right now for tomorrow. And as long as the Lord tarries, this should be our focus, to provoke each other and to love and to good works and to make sure that our heart is prepared for Christ when he comes. We have talked about how this week is very significant with so many celestial signs pointing that this week and this time is very significant. The celestial clock is pointing to things that draw our attention to them in this time. And this particular combination of certain events will only happen this time as well. And when we see the enemy action, what the enemy has been up to, we see them busy as well and it appears they expect something to happen in this time period as well. Now, we can't say Christ will return this week, but he does say when you see these signs, and particularly the celestial signs and the sun and moon and stars, that it means that he is nigh even at the doors. So that is all I can tell you is the day is approaching and it appears we are very, very close. So many events coming together this week, especially that the enemy is pointing to with some degree of expectation on their part as well. Now, this week... Here in America, there is a large storm that is approaching the northeast called Jonas. And it has gotten a lot of attention. And it appears that it is going to reach historic levels, or at least levels that have not been reached in quite a while, as far as the amount of storm and disruption that it will bring, particularly to that area. But its naming is very significant. It's called Jonas. And they're making sure you hear this name. So let's do a little research. Jonas... The Hebrew version of the name means dove, but to the Greeks it means sign. So it's very interesting that we have a dove and sign in the same word. And scripture also calls us to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But Jonas, it is a sign. Luke eleven twenty nine through 30. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. They seek a sign. And there shall no sign be given it, but the sign of Jonas the prophet. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. Jesus was telling the multitude that Jonas, who we commonly know as Jonah, Jonas was a sign. He was sent to Nineveh to bear a witness and to be a sign that they needed to repent and that destruction was coming, sudden destruction. But it's interesting when we consider the context and the prophetic implications, and he was telling them that prophecy was going to be fulfilled, he was going to be in the earth three days and then rise again. There is a pattern with Jonas, with Christ's resurrection. But when we consider the double implication of prophecy, and that's often what examples and patterns in Scripture are, there's usually a double reference on a small scale that points to how it will be carried out on a larger scale. When we consider that, He's talking about a generation. He says, this generation, when he was alive right then, that generation, the sign that they were going to be given was Jonas the prophet. Now, he wasn't saying that Jonah himself was going to come onto the scene and wave signs and say, you know, the end is near and all that. No, he was saying Jonas, his pattern, his type, that is what was going to be seen in that generation. And if we consider in prophetic implications today, how Jesus strongly mentioned that the end-time events will take place in one generation and that they will see signs, we can also consider this context that this generation where we live today will also see a similar sign of Jonas. 
in context with all the other signs. We should not be surprised if we do see one. Now, of course, Jonah was sent to Nineveh, which was the capital of the Assyrian Empire at that time, and he preached the message of repentance. Jonah 4, 2 through 4. Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Jonah was sent as a sign. And when you consider that he had just spent some time in a whale's belly, he was not the most prettiest looking person, and no doubt his story and his appearance stood out. And people could look at him and say, Whoa, there's something different about him. And they knew he had a particular message. And his message was to the capital city, Nineveh, of the Assyrian Empire. So now, in our generation, we hear in the news of a major blizzard storm that is hitting the northeast. But they make a point of mentioning how this is going to hit Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States, particularly hard. And you'll find common phrases in the news of how Washington, D.C. is in the crosshairs and Washington, D.C. is going to be hit the most. They make a big deal that this large snowstorm that's going to be impacting a number of major cities, they always draw attention back to this is going to cripple Washington, D.C. and Washington, D.C., which is our capital city. Jonas is going to our capital city. And that should also raise up some other red flags. Because where else have we recently heard about the District of Columbia and Washington, D.C.? Columbia losing its crown and the symbolism there. And the tie-in with Philippians. The fifth wave, which is coming out tomorrow, also talks about the eastern seaboard, particularly the Washington, D.C. area. And the District of Columbia. And the X-Files, which is also coming out next week, also makes a big deal to make sure you notice that Washington, D.C. is a part of their attention and focus. Jonas is coming to the District of Columbia. We don't know if the storm is natural or if it is engineered to a degree, but we should not let the significance of the naming and where it's going escape our attention. Our attention is being brought to it for a reason, and it ties in with a lot of celestial events that are going on right now, enemy action, so it should draw our attention that Washington, D.C. is being visited by Jonas. Also happening this week is the Sundance Film Festival, which is also interesting, the timing, especially considering all the emphasis on the sun god, Apollo, Apollyon, the big reference of that that has been made recently, and also the big push for Lucifer, the light bearer coming onto the scene. So right in this exact same window, they happen to have a... Sun Dance Film Festival. And one of the actors who is in a film at Sundance caught my attention. Nick Jonas from the Jonas Brothers. And he's in a film called Go. So the exact same day that a storm called Jonas is hitting Washington, D.C., a film is being screened at the Sundance Film Festival starring Nick Jonas in it. And the film is called Go. Very suspicious. And just when you do a little bit of research about goat, other things catch your attention of its connection with Satan and the devil. And this whole movie, Goat, is based off a memoir that features the goat. Very disturbing that this is being pushed right now in context. And when we look at the celestial signs of what's happening on this exact same day when they screen this goat film, we see that the sun is entering Capricornus, the constellation associated with Pan and Satan. Very disturbing. This is not coincidence. The enemy is preparing for Pan, Lucifer, to come onto the scene. They are getting ready, and they know it is any day now. Another connection we find with Jonas is the Fast of Nineveh. The Fast of Nineveh is a three-day fast commemorating the repentance of the Ninevites at the hands of Prophet Jonah according to the Bible. This fast is observed for three days starting Monday three weeks before Clean Monday. Now this is observed by the Church of the East, Syriac Orthodox churches, but it has a lot of tradition going back to particularly that area and that culture. But when we look at the dates of when this was commemorated, 2016, January 18th through the 20th, 
Do you think this is coincidence either? The fast of Jonah, Jonas, which is also called the fast of Nineveh as well, has been going on for three days in this exact same week that the celestial signs are going on, and the day that it ends, they screen a film with Jonas about the goat, and a storm called Jonas starts. It should catch our attention. And when we consider that city that Jonas was sent to, Nineveh, and notice the winged creature that Nineveh was prominently known for that we've seen and we've talked about recently in our videos, Nurgle, the centaur, Sagittarius, the hunter with the bow on the horse, the horseman, the centaur, different slight variations on the same thing. But the fast of Jonah and the fast of Nineveh ended on the same day that the sun exits Sagittarius, the centaur most known in connection with Nineveh. These signs are meant to catch our attention. Do you see the day approaching? In our last video, we did a big review talking about the last generation and how the last generation will see the beginning events of the hourglass being turned over, but they also see the end. Psalm 90.10 says, The days of our years are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years. The average lifespan is seventy years, and we just find ourselves now just past seventy, but also seventy years since captivity for the nation of Israel, so to speak. And we also heard the calls for peace and safety back in November, which tells us that sudden destruction is coming soon. And just like Jesus told that generation way back when that they would see the sign of Jonas, we should not be surprised that this generation is also seeing a sign of Jonas. And when we consider that Jonah, a single prophet by himself, was sent to the capital city Nineveh to warn it and to prepare the way, that sudden destruction was coming. Likewise, we should not be surprised when we see the calls for peace and safety back on November 13th. That means sudden destruction is coming. The spirit of Jonas, in a sense you could say, came and gave warning. And when we count the days from November 13th, when the first calls went out, to 21st, that is 70 days. 70 days is very significant in Scripture. And it's also associated with judgment as well. But 7 denotes perfection. 10 times 7 is 70. And that denotes an entire period coming to perfection. And you find 70 throughout Scripture. But one interesting place that we find it is in Luke 10, 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whither he himself would come. Christ appointed 70 disciples, and he sent them out as ambassadors to the different cities, telling them that he was coming. Christian, the last 70 days we've heard the warnings of peace and safety. That means Christ is coming, and also means sudden destruction is coming as well. On our website, we have the handout Peace and Safety announced, which reviews the different calls, but also what we should be doing and what we should be focusing on. And there's a number of other resources linked in the article that can help you make sure that you are prepared. The sign of Jonas to our capital city should catch our attention. Sudden destruction is coming. I do not know when, but when we see the convergence of all these events, we know that time is very short. Matthew 25, 6-7 And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, and trimmed their lamps. 1 John 3, 3 And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Overcome, overcome. Maranatha.